second topic on which you've asked me to uh, discuss today is what we call the future of money. Indeed, as central banks navigate a complex and changing landscape, we should not only aim to anticipate future trends, but we should also try to shape them. And in doing so, we should be particularly attentive to risks and make sure that we perform a thorough analysis of the cost and benefit. The financial services environment is evolving as new entrants shake up the markets and disrupt it. Public demands is there. The ongoing discussion around so-called stable coins offers a glimpse of the changes that are yet to come. This phenomenon could disrupt the current payment landscape with spillover effects for monetary policy transmission, financial stability, and the international monetary system more broadly. But I can assure you that the ECB is not standing still. Last year, I actually, I remember when I was last with you for this nomination uh, hearing, I did mention tips to ensure that you all knew about tips. And I had just learned about tips. Well, I know a little more now. So tips is target instant payment settlement. And it's not surprising that actually we didn't know about it so much. It's because it happens very much behind the scene. It happens between banks to make sure that there is instant payments between banks on a 24-hour basis, seven days a week, and 365 days a year. So it happens behind the scene, but it allows for the instant payment uh, between them. And it certainly responds to the growing user demands for instant payments and help ensure that bank account holders in Europe can be reached and can actually transact. So by offering settlement in central bank money, TIPS increases the speed and safety of customers' daily transactions. Is it yet well spread throughout the banking system? Not yet, uh, because clearly some of them had developed their own system. But we very much hope that it will be more broadly used and, uh, and disseminated in order to facilitate uh, transactions and make them safer. Second area, since 2016, the ECB has also been exploring the application of new technologies, particularly the famous DLT, distributed ledger technologies, to market infrastructure. Together with the Bank of Japan, the ECB is conducting a research project called STELLA, which is investigating innovations that can facilitate safer, faster, and cheaper financial transactions. But driving change also means identifying and managing the risks that come with breaking new grounds. Innovations, including stable coins, will only be beneficial if the associated risks are mitigated through effective regulations that's where you come into place, and oversight. So I believe that we should follow the golden rule of supervision in that matter. Same business, same risks, same rules. No matter what the window dressing is, no matter what the technology implies. We must ensure that stable coins do not compromise the safety and efficiency of the payment system or the soundness and stability of financial and monetary system. And this is all the more important for stable coins with the global reach. The G7 Working Group, chaired by my fellow Executive Board, Benoit Curé, has made clear recommendations with a view to developing a globally consistent approach to their regulation and oversight. As it did for the general data protection regulation, the famous GDPR, I believe that the European Union can show the way here. In line with international standards and recommendations, we, and of course you are co-legislators in that respect, should develop and enforce regulation that strikes the right balance between innovation on the one hand and risks on the other hand, supporting innovation but addressing, being mind, mindful, and 
uh, cautious about the risks. The ECB is ready to play its part and is already collaborating with other central banks and international authorities to that end. We are also reviewing our oversight framework to capture innovative payment solutions, including stable coins arrangements. And in doing so, we are following a risk-based and proportionate approach. Looking ahead, the ECB will continue to act as a catalyst for change. We will go on engaging European shareholders to actively contribute to a pan-European payment solution. We also play our part in full independence in assessing the value of central bank digital currencies for European citizens and the broader economy. A central bank digital currency would allow citizens to use central bank money in their daily transactions. However, depending on its design, a central bank digital currency could pose risks. For instance, they could alter the way in which monetary policy is conducted and transmitted in the real economy. They could also carry implications for the functioning of the global financial system and its stability. So the question of central bank digital currencies and their optimal design certainly warrants further analysis. Our ultimate goal is to foster safe, safer, innovative and integrated payment in euro. This will in turn benefit everyone in the euro area and it will strengthen the euro internationally as well. So, Madam Chair, Honourable Members of uh, the Econ Committee, the last Parliament uh, elections that you went through highlighted clearly that people expect ambitious responses from Europe. Matching these expectations by working together is the best way to strengthen people's confidence in the European project, the Euro and the ECB. Jean Monnet once said, everyone is ambitious. The question is if one is ambitious to be or ambitious to do. And certainly at the ECB, we are ambitious to do and to do so jointly with others whenever that is possible. I thank you very much for your attention.